Hello there. Uh, welcome. This is Rick Navarro. Um, what I'm doing here is showing you the basic setup for Alarm.com, the website. Um, it's easier. You can actually do most of these settings on the actual phone and on the actual app. Um, it's a little bit easier to navigate through here on um, the website. You would simply go to Alarm.com, uh, log in. And um, this page should show up. You would put your username and your password. And I'm just going to go over some settings and some simple things that I want everyone to know. So once you open it up, it's going to set you up and take you to this dashboard here. Um, this dashboard will be a little bit different for each person depending on what items uh, you have as far as uh, devices. I have a thermostat. Um, I have cameras set up. So um, your actual dashboard will look a little different depending on uh, on the person. Right now my panel is disarmed. Um, of course I'm able to arm and disarm from the computer just like you would your app by pressing or clicking I should say. Uh, that and choosing either away or stay. So if I chose stay, it would start arming and my system's arming stay. I just got a notification on my phone as well. Um, and then I can disarm it the same way by doing that. Um, your sensors kind of just show what the scoop is with your sensors. Um, it shows what's open, close, and name of the sensors, etc. If you want to rename the sensors, this is where you would do that. Um, let's go back a little bit here. The first thing I want to do for everybody is change uh, uh, or go into your notification settings. The reason I want to do this is I don't want you to become numb to notifications. I don't want you to be getting so many notifications that you ignore notifications. Uh, the whole point of getting a notification is because it's, a, it's an important reminder uh, or an important event that's going on. So I want to make sure that um, you're aware of those notifications. You don't get numb to them. Um, so there's a couple suggestions I have as far as uh, your notification settings. Uh, the unexpected activity, it actually seems like something that you'd want to turn on, but you're going to actually want to turn off. Alarm.com uses um, certain types of analytics that kind of track uh, your everyday use of your home, and if they notice something out of the ordinary, they will um, notify you. For me, um, you know, my schedule's different every day, and... I have kids and my wife, etc. That there's too many, too many factors that you know I don't want to be bothered with this notification, so I turn it off. One thing you want to turn on, you want to make sure you toggle. The way you turn it on, by the way, is by toggling, clicking this this button. So if it's blue, that means it's on alarm event. So that's obviously if your alarm is triggered, you want to be notified that uh, of that. I'm actually going to go into um, I'm going to click on this pencil where it says edit and I want to show you how you can be notified of this. Um, this will tell you what you want to be notified and if you if you scroll all the way down to the bottom it gives you options of add recipient and how you want to be notified. For me personally I think by default it, it sets your email up in one of these uh, recipients I don't check my email every second that I get an email and I don't like my email box flooded with, with too many uh, too much junk mail or too many emails so I personally choose not to have my email on there so if you want to remove uh, a certain uh, recipient um, I go ahead and just click on this X and that'll get rid of it now if I want to add it um, these will have your options of what you can add and if you want to 
uh, add an email address or a phone number where you want to receive a text message to, you would just press click here on the, the, the plus new button. I've already done that stuff, so I have, I have an option of, of using my email address. I have an option of getting a text message uh, or a push notification. Um, so you can choose text message, push notification. Those push notifications are those little, uh, little uh, banners that pop up on your iPhone or your Android. Um, sometimes you can get numb to those. Um, so really important ones, you know, I kind of like text message. So I'm actually going to switch mine over to a text message. Um, so I'd like to get a text message if there's an alarm event. I'm most likely to check a text message. That's why I'm choosing that option. So that's what I'm going to choose. So I have my text message there. So I'm going to save, uh, save that. Uh, action by any user or key fob. Some people like this on, some people don't. I like this on. I like to know when my wife gets home, when she arms or disarms the system. Um, so it basically allows me to know when she's leaving, when she's you know getting home. I like to know if someone else is uh, arming or disarming my system. Sometimes uh, I have my mom come, you know, take the dog out or something like that, or maybe you have a dog walker or a housekeeper and you've assigned them a code, this will also notify you if someone arms or disarms your system. I'm going back into the uh, editing section. And um, you can choose to get this notification at all times or only during the following times. So if you only want, if you know your housekeeper comes on Thursdays and you only want to know on Thursdays when someone arms or disarms your system, you can choose that as well. So that's kind of nice. Um, you could also determine how you want to be notified of this. This isn't as important for me uh, uh, of a notification. I do like to be in the know. So I just kept a push notification. Uh, my most important notifications, I believe I'm going to set up as a, as a text message. Um, so this is going to stay the same, I think, I have here. So we'll just save that. And then um, reminder, if you want a reminder at a certain time, you can click edit, choose a reminder. This is particularly great uh, if it's a property that you're having work or construction being done at and you want to be notified, um, you know, at 7 p.m., uh, if the system hasn't been armed and you want to be notified uh, of that, um, you can get a text message then and it reminds you that you can go ahead and arm your system uh, remotely. Uh, systems, excuse me, system actions to watch will let you know if uh, your system is not communicating, not responding, or anything like that. So I want to go ahead and make sure that's on. And I want to go to make sure I have this set up. So I have this right now set up to a push notification. I would actually like to get a text message if this happens. So now I'm getting a text message to my phone. I'm going to save that. And then I'm all set. So these are the settings uh, or the notification settings that I recommend. Alarm events on, action by any user on, if you want to know if someone's arming or disarming the system and system actions to watch. If you're not really interested in getting, you know, hardly any notifications, the only ones I would turn on are alarm events and system actions to watch. You want to know, obviously, if your alarm goes off and you want to know, obviously, if your alarm is not responding or if there's something, uh, an error in the communication. Um, so those would be the notifications that I would choose. And then I would choose how you would want to receive them, whether it is via email or um, 
via text message or push notification. Just a quick reminder, if you want push notifications on your uh, cell phone, uh, on those settings, on the, those app settings, you want to make sure you, you allow for notifications. Um, the other thing I want to teach you is how to uh, create users. So from the dashboard or from really any point you have this menu over here on the left, you'll go ahead and click user. And I currently have several users. I have a, a user for everyone in my family that I uh, may potentially need to access my home. You can or you don't have to do that, but I like to do that. Each one of these people have their own code. So uh, uh, let me show you how to add a user. Um, so in the user section, you're gonna click add a user. So let's add one for my housekeeper. And it will require a first and last name. You can put a first or last name or you can do uh, a simple description. Housekeeper, I'm gonna use for the first name and then last name will be uh, one. We will click on this create button. Access code. Now you can assign a code to this person. So I will click into the box and assign a four digit code. So let's do 5656. Five, this will be her code at the panel. She does not need to have an app, but she can simply use this code on the keypad of your system. So alarm.com actually communicates with your panel directly. In order for it to communicate with your panel, you do, however, need to turn this on. So toggle this switch over to the on position, and we're gonna hit save. Once I've done that, housekeeper 5656, this code will now work on my keypad. Now, because I set up my notifications, let's go back here, to have action by any user, when my housekeeper disarms the system or arms the system, I will receive a notification, a text message on my phone or a push notification, letting me know that housekeeper one has disarmed my system or housekeeper one has now armed my system. So we'll go back to the users. Now let's say housekeeper one, which is right here, is only the housekeeper for that one particular day. I can give her and assign her that 5656, and I can simply, after today, click on these three dots and go down to delete. I will delete housekeeper one. Now that code will no longer work on my alarm system. So that's how easy it is to delete. If I'm mad at my sister, I can go ahead and delete her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, that, that's how easy it is to, uh, to actually delete there. Um, so now we've learned how to add a user. We've learned about your notifications. And one last thing I'm gonna teach you is how to uh, add a different login. If you want someone else to have an app, you can simply give them your own username and password, or if you would like them to have their own, you would click on Manage Logins, which was right up here in the user section. And I have some examples here that I can go ahead and delete. If you ever need to delete a login, you can simply use a little trash bin that's on the other side of their login. But otherwise, you would add a login, and you would simply enter in their email address.
choose their language and hit save. Once I hit save, an email will be sent to that person. Oops, there's a couple more steps, sorry about that. Um, this is kind of neat because it'll actually allow you to choose um, their permission level. So master control, you can read the description, but users with master control have all the permissions that a primary account user has. Full control allows full control as described, but it won't allow you to change uh, notifications or anything like that. Read only, um, I believe will let you arm and disarm systems, and that's about it. Uh, anyway, you can kind of play around with that as well or um, choose what you would like them to be able to have access to. Uh, I'm going to give this person, uh, let's just give them full control for now. And then let's hit save. And now that I've hit saved, now that it's been saved and I've, I hit save, an email will be sent to this person. Um, and it's similar to the welcome email that you received. It'll provide a link where they can click, download the app, and uh, select their uh, password. Their login name by default will end up being their, um, their email address. Now I'm going to delete that example. And um, that's kind of like the first tutorial that I wanted to um, share with you guys. Those are of very simple things, adding users, notifications. Um, I'll do some other videos on some other things here shortly, but um, thank you very much, and you can always call me if you need anything. My number is area code 818-807-5853. Uh, and again, this is Rick Navarro with ACS Security. Um, stay safe, and let's talk soon.